Next, you're going to watch a couple of videos on working with fractions. These are kind of refresher videos of topics you are already familiar with. We are going to start with a short video on reducing fractions. So let's look at a couple of examples here that don't involve fractions. We know that 89 divided by 1 is 89. Negative 13 divided by 1 is negative 13. 4,206 divided by 1 is 4,206. So what rule am I trying to show you here an example of? We know that any number divided by 1 equals the same number. And when we reduce fractions, what we're really doing is taking the fraction and dividing it by 1. So if we look at 6 ninths divided by 1, we know that the result is going to be the same fraction we started with, 6 ninths. But we haven't really reduced the fraction in this example. We have the exact same fraction at the end. What we're going to do is replace 1 with a fraction that's equivalent to 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we're just replacing the 1 with another way of representing 1. And when we do 6 ninths divided by 3 thirds, the result is 2 thirds. We get the 2 thirds from doing 6 divided by 3, that's 2, and 9 divided by 3, that's 3. So the answer is 2 thirds. But we know that 2 thirds is really the same as 6 ninths. We've reduced that fraction. It has to be the same because all we did was divide by 1. This is a way of writing a fraction in lowest terms. Lowest terms means that once you have the fraction in lowest terms, there is no other number that can be divided into both the numerator and the denominator besides 1. So there's no common divisor between 2 and 3 except for 1. So that's how we know that 2 thirds is written in lowest terms. Here are a couple of examples for us to try together. Let's reduce 4 eighths to lowest terms. We have to look for a number that could be divided into 4 and 8. And right away I'm thinking of the number 4. 4 goes evenly into both. So I divide 4 divided by 4 and 8 divided by 4. I get 1 over 2. And since there's no number that goes into 1 and 2, that's lowest terms. Now let's look at one that's a little bit tougher, 36 over 54. I have to find a number that goes into both. And there are a lot of numbers that go into 36 and 54. So depending on which number I pick, I'm going to get a different result. So how do I know that I'll be in lowest terms? Well, as long as you pick the highest number that goes into both, the highest number, that's the greatest common factor, then you'll always get to lowest terms. But suppose I make a mistake or I miss the highest number and I start with 3. I think 3 goes into both. So I divide both by 3 and I get 12 over 18. When I look at that answer, I can think of another number that goes into both 12 and 18. So this is not lowest terms. That's okay. I don't need to go back to the beginning. I can just go from here and move forward. So let me think of something that goes into both 12 and 18. Again, there are a lot of choices, but I'm going to pick 3. 3 goes into both. So divide 12 by 3 and divide 18 by 3. I get 4 over 6. Is that lowest terms? No, because 2 goes into both. So again, I'll divide out a common, multiple, a common factor. And that factor in this case is 2. So I divide 4 by 2 and divide 6 by 2, and I get 2 thirds. So if I would have started all of this by dividing both of these by 18, I would have gone straight to lowest terms and had an answer of 2 thirds. But it's OK if you don't see that, that divisor right away, that 18 goes into both. You can take a little more time and keep on dividing, keep on dividing, keep on dividing until you get to lowest terms.